I'm not exactly sure which rabbi has said it, but once upon a time, a rabbi from Temple Beth El, whatever group I was in, he said that whatever type of Judaism you belong to, whether Reform, Conservative, Orthodox, you're practicing some form of Rabbinic Judaism. Because let's face facts. I mean, who doesn't celebrate Hanukkah and light candles for Hanukkah? If you do, that's Rabbinic Judaism. If you celebrate Purim, it's Rabbinic Judaism. If you light candles on Shabbat, it's Rabbinic Judaism. What I'm trying to do is trying to figure out what are the origins of Rabbinic Judaism. What we do is we take a new approach to the Pirkei Avos, the Ethics of Our Fathers, the very first chapter, and instead of perhaps looking at what the rabbis have to teach us there, uh, these rabbis who really were forming rabbinic Judaism as we know it today, what do they say in a historical perspective? We go through the history of mostly Israel at the time, Eretz Israel at the time, uh, that was the focus, the real focus of Jewish life uh, during the, um, the Second Temple era, which basically is from, let's say, 350 before the Common Era until 70 uh, of the Common Era at the destruction of the Second Temple. And we focus historically about that and we try to apply it in real time with the rabbis who are speaking uh, what they're saying, what they're saying in Pirkei Avot. Because when we, when the very first class we talk about is we transition from the First Temple, which was a totally, I hate to say it, different Judaism that was practiced in the First Temple compared to the Second Temple. And we're going to figure out why that is. Uh, for the very first class, we're going to talk about that. And there was what the transition process was and how difficult it was. And that transition process lasted the entire Second Temple period. We are going to uh, discuss the, the momentous events. Um, what, what did Alexander the Great, what was his purpose in conquering the world? And how did it affect the world? And in different places. Whether your Jews were in Alexandria, Jews were in uh, Mesopotamia, Jews were in Israel. How were they affected? We're going to talk about the real story of Hanukkah. There are really two stories of Hanukkah. One that's taught in Sunday school, and one you've probably never heard of before. And which one was celebrated? Which one do we celebrate today? Very fascinating. We're going to discuss um, how the rabbis uh, had to deal with the internecine battles that the Jews were facing during this entire Second Temple period. It was a pretty disturbing time. Uh, we look at civil wars in Africa today, and they ain't got nothing on the Jewish people in the Second Temple period. Uh, we had plenty of civil strife, and tens of thousands of Jewish lives were, were stamped out by Jews. Uh, it's, it's, it's a sad period, it's an exciting period, it has potential, and a lot of it was never even realized, and it went a totally different direction. And what the rabbis did in Pirkei Avot and the, the rabbis of the day, they made Judaism portable. They made it something that we can put in our pocket and take it wherever we go. And that is the Judaism that lasted. There were other sects of Judaism which said, that's not the right focus. And that was a cause for strife too, of course. And, and, and some Jews left the Jewish people and made their own type of Judaism elsewhere. And we'll talk about the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Essenes. Uh, we'll talk about the Sadducees versus the Pharisees. It's Dukim versus Perushi. Uh, it was a total battle where at the same time they had to live together. All this will be covered and we'll get a better appreciation for what was trying to be accomplished, what was accomplished, and how it affects us today and why we think the way we think. You'll be able to apply things in your modern day Judaism no matter how you practice. There are things, there are ideas that will be pertinent to you. I'm, I guarantee it. And the history is just fascinating and I have a great time with it. <laughs>